conference play. Riley West will lead it in or will lead it off for the Lady Vols. South Paul Shelby Lowe gets the nod in the circle. And the first pitch will miss just off the plate for ball one. Well, Brett, Shelby Lowe's going to have to come in today. And she's done a good job limiting walks. She ranks up there in the SEC and she limits some extra base hits, but she is going to need that today and really working hard. And that's the pitch right there, very similar to the first one that she threw. She's going to need that call today. Yeah, for Shelby, she'll work you both sides of the plate and She's got a really good curveball, good change up, and, and, all has, and also has a drop ball in her arsenal. Lives 64 67. That change up, though, is really what keeps hitters off balance. <laughs> West, one of the home runs last night for Tennessee, hitting 369. Hit her ninth homer, has 23 runs batted in. She hit cleanup last night in game number one. Today, she leads off. And just continued, you know, what she did in the South Carolina series before coming here to Auburn. There she had two home runs, three RBIs. And again, there's just no holes in this Tennessee lineup. We talked about it earlier off air. You can kind of just interchange them, and it doesn't get any easier if you're Shelby Lowe today. Wind in the 2-2. Shelby Lowe wins the first battle. Got West chasing outside. Good start for the Tigers, one down here in the first. Lowe, the senior out of Carrollton, Alabama. And Amy, she's been working hard ever since her freshman season to get back fully healthy. And this is this year's the closest she's ever been to that. She's four and two and with a 3.46 ERA. Key for her though is to get ahead early. Yeah, and like you said, she's kind of been riddled by injuries and maybe finding her form right here in this part of the season, but that first way that she attacked West, if she can do that today, even her balls were missing around the zone, which that's kind of what she was doing before. If she was missing a pitch, it was way out of the zone and hitters weren't even sniffing at it. And a Pooney offering at the 1-0, even to count one ball and a strike. Pooney, a good hitter in her own right. She was an all SEC first team selection in 2023. Hitting 270 on the year, still has some pop at the top half of this order with seven homers. On a spin outside, two balls and a strike. Amy, I was thinking about this matchup today with who Auburn was going to be pitching. Again, Penta pitched last night in game one. We'll likely see her again tomorrow in game two. But I was expecting low because we saw Annabelle Weidra last night out of the bullpen. And then I started thinking about the look that Tennessee's going to offer, the 2-1. Hard hit ball, and Pooney bounces that one right back up the middle. First hit of the afternoon for the Lady Vols, puts a runner at first. Well, and again, that was uh, Shelby Lowe, that ball that was really close. If she can keep the ball down today and kind of get ground balls and let uh, her defense work for her, because if it gets up in the zone, Tennessee has proven that they can make you pay. On the top part of this order with McKenna Gibson, all SEC selection, second team All-American a year ago, hitting 358, first pitch. Swung on and fouled back, but back to the point about the pitchers, you know, I was comparing Auburn's pitching to Tennessee's, and you know, yeah, Penta and Carlin Pinkins, who have that similar identity, right? They throw a lot of gas, high strikeout rate pitchers, and then you have Gottschall for Tennessee and Shelby Lowe, who's more spin, more finesse, and they complement the speed pitchers so well on these staffs. I mean, you think back to, to Lowe and Penta earlier in their careers and when, when Lowe was, was fully healthy, and then on the flip side, you see what Pickens and Gottschall is doing this year for Tennessee and one of the better pitching staffs, if not the best, in, in, the, in the SEC. Yeah, for sure. And when you are a team coming into Auburn, playing Auburn in general, you're preparing 100% for Penta. Long fly ball out of real estate is Packer. That falls over the wall for a two-run home run. And Tennessee, they start this game off as they did yesterday in the second with a two-run blast. And it is the fourth home run of the weekend for the Lady Vols. And excuse me, actually make that... Yeah, the fourth home run of the week. It looked like a routine fly ball where the Auburn outfielders just ran out of real estate. I was going to say, I was going to, I mean, I literally was getting ready to say, you know, we got the second out there. For, and it just kept going and going, and Packer gave it a good effort to try to bring it back in, but got out. 
Well, it reminds me, uh, got to see Arkansas a couple weekends ago, and in the first home run of that series, Amy was hit to left field, and it also looked like a routine fly ball. It is 200 down the lines here at Jamie Moore, just as it is at USA Hall of Fame Stadium. And there is, like, zero breeze, not a cloud yeah. in the sky. I mean, that just kept carrying on its own. But imagine now, I mean, it's Tennessee with, with the number of home runs this weekend that, that's obviously going to be a talking point for the rest of this game. And tomorrow is how could Auburn keep Tennessee to keep the ball in the ballpark because Tennessee's proven it. You leave it over the, over the plate, they'll bang it. And now you got to face... The player who led the country in home runs a season ago in Kiki Malloy. Matter of fact, she leads the program with the most home runs in program history. You know, I was listening to an interview with her earlier, and some people were saying, oh, maybe she's not had the best start. And I mean, you look at these numbers, and it's like, okay. Like, you know what's going to come. But she made the point of, you know, you have to reinvent yourself and then fall back on what you know. And I thought that was... I mean, really spot on because of all the technology and all the film yeah. that you can have. And But if you, you know, make yourself better in some areas, but falling back on what you know and what you are is just a great, great hitter. And One, Shelby two. Lowe gets her there. Yeah, Lowe went down to get her, and Lowe, all right, giving up a single to home run, but also has two Ks. So she does have some pitches working for her here in the first. I mean, that was just a great pitch. Just falls off the table, comes inside there. And, Sure, Malloy probably wants that one back, but great pitch by Shelby Lowe. Well, that'll bring up Destiny Rodriguez, the second baseman, sophomore out of Live Oak, Texas. And has a solid average, 351. Yeah, they have five hitters coming in this weekend, Amy, that I think they were hitting 357 or better, five players. I mean, put up that kind of numbers it, you have a lot of crooked numbers scoring each and every ball game Rodriguez right there in the mix with five homers 14 runs batted in and she had a stellar se series against South Carolina seven hits and a home run in that series for Tennessee yeah you know I was just going to say that Tennessee is not one of those teams that get a run here get a run here yeah. when they put runs up they are putting up crooked numbers 2-0 outside is three balls, no strikes. And yet looking at that, some of their scores, and they've played a couple close ones, but for the most part, I mean, like they, they went on the road, defeated number eight Clemson, won at Clemson 2-1, but they have won a lot of lopsided games this year against good opponents. Well, Lode. I think it might be easier to talk about the games that they've lost since yeah. there's only four of them. Stanford. 1-0 Stanford, 2-1 Texas. Texas yep. Cal State Fullerton and then uh, UCLA. Yeah, and that, that Cal State Fullerton team, I mean, that, that's always a mid-major that you can circle every year that they're going to upset some Power 5 teams. 3-1 pitch lifted up and on the zone. Auburn's actually gone out to Cal State Fullerton a time or two. I know Florida goes out to the West Coast, and I always commend the SEC teams that, that can get out to the West Coast, Amy, because there's some really good softball out that way. Cal State Fullerton, UCLA, they're two of the first names that, that are at the top of that list. Yeah, and, and that's a trip for any team down south there to go all the way across the country. Payoff, bouncer picked by Peralta, steps and throws, inning over. Tennessee, they continue. And, you know, there were two parts of the game he said they need to do. Pitchers need to put hitters away, and then on the offensive side, they need to get the hit with runners in scoring position, and that's really easy to say in theory sure. and a lot different to execute, which Auburn struggled with yesterday. They have relied a lot on Anna Wollers this year in this lineup. Anna transferred in from DePaul. She was a 2023 All Big East first team selection, led DePaul in just about every offensive category where she hit 364. You look at her numbers this year, Amy, she is the top hitter right now for Auburn, been the most consistent over the last few weeks, started every game this year, coming in with a 333 clip. Yeah, and it's kind of one of those things when you don't have batters in front of you and behind you that can protect you and pitchers can come right at you. I mean, a little different than Tennessee, right? You don't want to work around a West. You don't want to work around a Rodriguez to get to a Malloy. Like, you just have to attack yeah. him. And that's honestly really not the case with this Auburn lineup. Well, Peyton Gonshaw. She's going in the circle today and gets her first strikeout. Rollers chased outside. The first of the day for Gonshaw. Gonshaw got went four innings, 
in relief last night. Picked up the win to improve to 12 and two. Had three strikeouts on three hits. And Gottschall, she's a transfer from Bowling Green. Her keys is that spin that we talked about, Amy. Yeah, I mean, 12 and two, that sub one ERA. She's pitcher of the week last week, which I think that was three straight. Three in a row, three. Yep. And the two others were the other pitcher, right? Picking, so that just proves how good they are in this league. KK McCrary, Tennessee native, turns on one foul. And Gotchel gets ahead, no balls and two strikes. Yeah, McCrary started her playing career at Tennessee, transferred to Auburn, Amy, sat out a year, did not play softball for a full calendar year, joined Auburn's team last year, and has been a bright spot for the Tigers. Big fly to left, back on the run is West, and the Tennessee native, KK McCrary, puts Auburn on the board with a first home run of the weekend for the Orange and Blue. Well, Britt, you know that one felt good for McCrary. Last night she gets the only extra base hit with the triple and then comes in here in the first inning. Auburn down two, cuts that lead in half. Take a look at it right here. Just gets way too up, too much part of the plate for Godshall and McCrary ready for it, sends it out to left. And I love it. You see the grounds crew out there on the deck in left field. Those guys can party. And KK McCrary, you nailed it. You know, that one felt good. I think not only playing for Tennessee, but growing up in the state of Tennessee. I mean, that, that means something to a lot of these players. And another Tennessee native coming to the plate is Michaela Packer. She calls Chattanooga home. And today for the Tigers is Michaela Packer Day. Something Auburn is doing different this year, Amy, is they're having a full senior day for each individual senior. And today it's number 10, Michaela Packer. Yeah, what, what a cool moment that was, having all of the family out here on the video board. She got to talk to them and then read a letter from her family. I mean, that's, that's also kind of emotional, right? And then you see if she get hit by a pitch there, but to turn that, have all of that, and then just flip the Twigley's angle, I'm sure it did look like that, but she was nowhere near the plate. Shortstop Nelia Peralta coming up for Auburn. And Peralta doesn't have the average, Amy, that I know she wants right now, but she has the resume. Here's a ground ball to short. Miller gloves, gets the lead runner. Packer comes flying in at second, and Peralta's aboard with a fielder's choice. Tennessee gets the lead runners to away. Here comes another big transfer to, excuse me, to the plate in Amelia Lack, the junior from Thousand Zones, California. 14 hits on the year, Amy, eight of those have left the ballpark for Amelia. I mean, that's just crazy. That, that really is the all or nothing in a stat line right there. And if she could get one of those, Auburn would like it here, put them up. Oh, what a jump oh on it. Coach Eugene Linty had to knock that ball down. And he's Woo. pointing over saying, hey, I'm fine. Let's get it fair next time. Coach linty has been coaching a long time. I'm sure that's not the first time that's happened to him. I, it's scary every time. It My is, goodness, indeed. that ball was it hit is. hard. Looking last night. Yeah, but you get a good view there. He's got the uh, Michaela Pac-Man Packer shirt on today. Here's a chopper. This one's fair. Gibson off the hop. Takes it to first. And the first inning comes to a close. So the long ball is in the ERA's actually improved runs per game is right there on par, averaging six. Amy, if they keep that up, I, I think there, there's a good chance Tennessee will be in OKC again here in a couple weeks. Right, and what the stats are not showing us is the human element, the human element and the chemistry that this team has. I mean, they know they can do it now and they're playing with that confidence. Panel, big fly. Packer looks up and out of real estate again. This time is Taylor Panel. Second homer of the day for Tennessee. And these Lady Ball bats are red hot this weekend on the Plains. Goodness, Brett, that was like a carbon copy from the first inning of Gibson. I mean, off the bat, I thought this one had more of a chance, but it just, again, keeps carrying, carrying. You see Packer just watch it go out. Okay. 
So for Tennessee, last night, three home runs, two already today, and we're just in the second inning. First pitch swinging for Nugent. She hit two last night. Pops one up to second. Mariah Pinta fights off the sun and gets an out for Shelby Lowe. That's really tough, too, Brett. If you give up two runs in the first inning, then you come back as an offense, cut it in half, and then the very first hitter you face hits it out of the park. One for Auburn. I was trying to make the point for them that, you know, I thought it was a good response. You come back, yeah, you don't get two, but you at least get one in that first inning. Seven of the eight runs this any or this series though for Tennessee have been scored with a home run. And for Auburn, they get that is going to be the key moving on. Again, is keeping the ball in the ballpark so far. That has been hard to do against this Tennessee lineup. Julia Katsoyanopoulos, who played a first base last night, playing catcher today for the Lady Balls, hitting eighth. When you talk to anyone on Tennessee staff or any of their players, you listen to them interviewed, all they talk about is attack, attack, attack. And yeah. I mean, it is evident in these first couple innings that that is their mentality. Popped up foul. Well, and I was listening to an interview with Coach Karen Weekly, and she talked about, you know, adjustments that they have to make in game and what they did against South Carolina. And she said that there is, there's a level where, you know, you can over adjust, try to do too much. And she said the more that they try to keep things simple, the better they are. This one's one, two in the dirt. And Anna Wollers cleans it up, takes it to leg down the first, and Shelby Lowe with her third K. Well, I was just going to say, when you're facing a team that has that mentality, free swinging, you have got to change speeds. You've got to change planes and keep it down. And those couple pitches that Lowe has left up. Tennessee's had her pay, but then she comes back right there with that off speed in the dirt and is able to get a strikeout. Amy, correct me if I'm wrong. I know that at least two of the three strikeouts, Shelby Lowe beat both hitters with a down pitch. Yeah, and a little off Malloy. She got Malloy on that pitch. Exact yeah. same pitch that you saw right there to uh, cut Swainopolis. For Miller, the nine hole hitter, two up. And Maybe with the transfer in from Middle Tennessee. She has been on a tear in this winning streak for the Lady Balls. Shallow center field, long run for Packer. She's got the wheels to get there. You can see they've already hit their average, so they're going to have to flip the script on this game if they're going to get a win because Tennessee already has three. Three early ones. KK, McCra or KK McCrary got a run back for Auburn with a solo homer in the first inning. Isis Tresvik leads off the second, hitting sixth. Tresvik, a junior out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Swung the bat well last year for Auburn. Transferred in for North Carolina A&T. Oh, goodness. That one fouled off and went off the umpire behind home plate. Yeah, that's definitely one of those you call timeout and uh, Give him a second. With, Somehow, with the strike I zone, I, I say that as in <laughs> uh, with uh, friendly intentions. Next pitch popped up right back to the pitcher, and Gottschall able to defend in front of home plate for the first out. Number five, Mariah Pinta. I'll bring up Mariah Pinta to the plate. Pinta is kind of has a similar. Bio as Amelia Lack in terms of numbers, five hits, three home runs. Amy, one of those a grand slam last week at Texas A&M. Yeah, and a lot less games played, really. I mean, she's well, not an everyday player, has come in when. Two of those are grand slams, by the way. Two grand slams. <laughs> That's a pretty good stat line right there. Penta last night was swinging early and often in counts. If I remember correctly, Amy, she didn't see many pitches. Yeah, she didn't see more than three pitches in an A-B yesterday. Here she's attacking early. Down 0-2, the younger sister of All-American Maddie Pinta, the ace pitcher for Auburn. And again, one of those players that uh, has seen some spot time and trying to get some, Coach Dean trying to get her some experience because he's really high on her. Said that uh, she has some real chance to be great here. 
I'm going to ask Coach Teen about their relationship at the beginning of the year. Her and her sister, here's a liner in the left, charging as West comes forward, sliding on her knee and making the catch. Nice play for Riley West, helping out her pitcher, Peyton Gonchill, in the circle. Man, this is where the defensive stats really help you, right? So she's in the right spot to begin with, kind of shallow, and then gets a good jump on it. You can see her make sure that she makes that catch. Good job by Gutschall. Got her on the fist there and able to get some defense behind her. Well, she started working her away and then came back in when she got ahead 0-2. Annabelle Weidra following suit, attacking on the first pitch. Weidra making her 12th start today. A junior out of Hoover, Alabama. Started her softball career at Michigan. Her second year back in her home state. And she pitched last night in relief for the Tigers. But she's a true utility player, Amy. I was just about to say that. I mean, she can pretty much play any position on the field. And that is very difficult to do when one of those positions is pitching. Auburn's got one against Gonshull today. Auburn only had three hits against her last night. She did not allow a run. Here's Weidra, opposite field, left center. Riley West takes care of two outs for Tennessee. And the again, a couple of them, they're just swinging the bat and it's just carrying and carrying. And that has, I think, everything to do with them ready to hit the ball when they get in the box. And I mean, early in the count. Well, we saw West, her bat last night. She's flashing the leather today with a sliding catch in left. Just last inning. 0 for 1 with a strikeout. And low working north and south against the Lady Vol left fielder. And for West, again, hit cleanup last night. She started over 100 games the last two years for Tennessee. And you look at the experience on this roster, Amy is, I mean, she is one of four seniors in this lineup and, and so much senior leadership. Matter of fact, Tennessee is not even playing a freshman. You got Rodriguez and Panel, both sophomores, everybody else, upperclassmen for Karen Weekly. Again, when we kind of did their rehab, their recap before, it was like all of these players have been there. They've done that. They know what it takes. And you're kind of seeing the results of that here this year. Well, the thing about Tennessee, too, is, is you always wonder, how is the team going to respond after an SEC regular season title? And then they also won the SEC tournament last year, had a run to OKC. Shelby Lowe wins the battle up and away. Second strikeout against West today is one down in the third. But you always wonder, how are teams going to respond? Tennessee is responded well, but Shelby Lowe, she's hanging in there despite the two mistake pitches today. Yeah, and that one she got up just enough, right? Because again, these Tennessee hitters are swinging free. They're ready to hit the ball. And that's why I think the off speed and keeping it down is gonna be so important, but she's able to place that one and get West again. Zeta Pooney, she set up McKenna Gibson in the first inning, laced a one out single. That single was Pooney's 21st hit of the season. And that's the pitch again, Brett, that Shelby Lowe is not getting called. And yeah. uh, you can see the frustration on her voice, on her face there because, I mean, it looks really close. Well, that's what Auburn and Coach Dean, he was clear. He, he said Auburn last night, he said the zone was tight for, for both teams. and. He didn't say it was it was good or bad. He just said Auburn had a tougher time adjusting to that last night, and Auburn's got to find a way to adjust to that here with Shelby Lowe. Again, Shelby facing Tennessee, who has already hit five homers this weekend. It's a strike on the inside corner, but low. I mean, she's not falling behind in too many deep counts. She hasn't walked anybody. She's only faced one full count today, and she got a ground ball out of it. Yeah, and 
Shelby Lowe knows this about herself. I mean, she's very self-aware. She's not going to overpower hitters, and so she's going to need to place it. And it's real tough if you're making those pitches and then not getting the call. And off the pitch, up and outside was Pooney. Pooney homered and had five runs batted in against South Carolina. Transferred in from Oklahoma. Payoff, right center field. On the run is Tresic and Packer, third home run of the day for Tennessee. This one by way of Pooney. Her eighth homer, 25th RBI. And balls are flying out of here left and right right now for the Lady Balls. Good grief. This is almost like a home run derby, Brett. Every, every ball that's hit is getting out of the park. And you're going to see it. This pitch is another one that's just left up in the zone. And Tennessee is clearly prepared for that, and they're ready and getting all over it. Well, the thing about Tennessee, I mean, that one there by Pooney. It was opposite field. Eight of the nine runs scored are by way of a home run this weekend. Here comes Coach Mickey. D. Gonna have to do keep that ball out out of this Tennessee's wheelhouse, which clearly is up in the zone. And then she starts first pitch up in the zone. Facing McKenna Gibson, starting third baseman, who started this home run derby today for Tennessee with a two-run home run in the first inning. Fourth of the year for Gibson, and Tambora comes back with her first strike of the afternoon. Gibson an RBI in 10 of the last 14 games. Does <laughs> Can you ask for much more than your three-hole hitter? No, not at all. <laughs> and I mean, she's in 425, well, coming into this 425 with runners in scoring position. So again, it just speaks to this lineup with how good they are, one through nine. And Bohr, though, good drop ball, has a change up and something she's been working hard on with Coach Mickey Dean from Auburn. It's better up outside, easy one to lay off for the veteran. Gibson playing third base this year for the Lady Vols. Played first base last year, played second base in 2022. Bought one off the hands and drops it in to center field for second hit of the afternoon. You know, you talk about that, Brett, all the positions that they're playing. I, I feel like we're seeing that more and more. Arkansas yeah. came in here and it was like, I didn't have enough room on the lineup. They were switching everywhere. Yeah. and. It's, I mean, I think that speaks to just the athletes that you face. Boy, the All-American facing the freshman, Melena Tambora. And I think the one thing that Auburn has in their favor is Tambora. Tennessee hasn't seen Tambora yet here this weekend. And key for Tambora and a freshman, Amy, a key in this situation is to get ahead, throw strikes. Right, and again, I, I sound like a broken record. Keep the ball down, and there it is up again. And Malloy's ready to hit it. It's. I think you just really need to trust your defense at this point. I hope your infield can make some plays and change some speeds because that ball gets up and not only is Tennessee hitting it, they are hitting it out of the park. Well, Auburn's defense has been a bright spot for the Tigers at times in SEC play. Just thinking back to that Arkansas series, Amy, where Auburn, I think they turned three double plays, maybe four that weekend against the Razorbacks. Well, one in particular that was at third base, and yeah. one they had the tying run at third, and line drive, Weidra caught it, double play, game over. Malloy missing on the drop ball, leaving in the count, two balls, two strikes. And that's the spot right there, Brett. That is the spot. Keep it down. Even if she hits it right there, I don't, I, I mean, it's Malloy, right? I want to yes. say, <laughs> it's not, probably not a good example, but uh, of someone who's not going to get a hit there, but that's a good spot. That's where Tambora needs to keep it. Bouncing ball to second. Pinta to Peralta. To Leck, and it got away. Malloy heads to second. Leck unable to get Malloy at second, so Auburn. They get the lead runner initially in all, all in, but Malloy able to 
take a free base on the Auburn mistake. Man, and if you're Tambora, you're coming in saying, I hit my pitch, I got the ground ball, and it's from the jump looks like an easy turn. And those are the things that the Auburn Tigers have to shore up if they're gonna if they're gonna win this game or do anything with the rest of the season, honestly. In a strength for Auburn. And the Tigers make their first error of the weekend. Or excuse me, actually their second error of the weekend. They had one late last night against Tennessee. But now that extends an inning, Amy, to your point, and that sets up a good hitter in Destiny Rodriguez, who comes in today hitting above 350. 0 for 1, though, with a ground out. And not only that, you saw Malloy as soon as the, the ball was through, second base. Yeah. No questions asked, and now she's in scoring position. Well, she has the speed. I mean, she's a center fielder. She's 20 for 22 this year in stolen base attempts. Down the middle, but high. And Rodriguez takes it above the belt for ball two. Tennessee has scored a run in every inning thus far here. And we're only in the top of the third. Rodriguez falls behind but has a base open at first. On deck is Taylor Panel. And Panel is one of those two. You're only one out away. It's not like it's no outs or one outs. One good pitch, and you're out of this inning. Finding the outside corner. But you also got to feel like if Tennessee scores this, I mean, it's just one yeah. every inning, right? And those add up fast. Hard hit. Pinta off the glove. Malloy able to score from second, and the Lady Vols add another tough inning defensively for Auburn. Couple ground balls could have had the Tigers out of it. Instead, Tennessee takes advantage with two outs, and Kiki Malloy scores. Let me take a look at it here, and Penta just doesn't stay down on it. I mean, that's a, especially at second base, that's one of those you got to get in front of no matter what. Even if it comes up and hits you, if it stays in front, you're going to get the out. I'll bring up Panel, who homered last inning. She led off the second with a solo homer. And for Panel, that was only her third homer of the year. 18 runs batted in. Missed most of last year with an injury and has come back this year as a sophomore, making her 29th start of the year. I was just going to say, you can kind of see that she's getting comfortable. Obviously, the more at-bats that she's getting, but missing a whole year like that, it can be tough to come back. And you can see what kind of player that she's projected to be. Good pitch to offer at and fouls it off. Tambor is only a strike away. But here's panel swing from the second inning. I mean, you off the bat again, it's just up and they're getting in their legs, elevating the pitches, and they are carrying and getting out of here. Well, and, and that's the thing. Take nothing away from what Tennessee's offense has done, but if the fence is maybe two feet back, two of those balls, maybe Amy would have been out. This will be in the infield. The catcher, Anna Wollers, with the underhand grab to stop the bleed. She has had a pretty quiet day, hit a batter, and but she's retired the last four. She'll face nine, one, and two. Abby Smith, Anna Wollers, and KK McCrary. We were just talking about this, Brett, how this is the first time through the lineup for Auburn. I mean, Tennessee is already the second time through seeing the pitcher. And if you look at the SEC stats, Gutshaw and Pickens have combined to throw some of the least amount of innings and in all, and you can see why. Like yeah. a few pitches and also to their offense, right? If you're if you're scoring runs and spreading teams, then you throw less innings. But all of that adds up by the time you get to the end of the year. Well, Gonshul, well, I'm looking, you know, from last night to today in the two innings she's thrown, no walks as the two ones punch foul on the ground by the slapper. And that's the thing, she's efficient. She threw 68 pitches last night in four innings 
and got the win while Pickens in comparison through 42 and three. Slap left side, snagged down by McKenna Gibson. Nice range by the third baseman. Up the back. Man, and sometimes that's just how it goes, like just reaches out. Big, strong stretch there. And you can get a better angle of it here. Able to get the first out of the inning. And like you were saying, those few pitches, and not only that, she works really fast. And so when you do that, your defense is always ready. Case in point, makes plays like that. Forgive me if I've said this to you before, but third baseman, or third base, that's my favorite position to watch in college softball because of the, the reaction plays that you have to make on the hot corner as Wohler's after offers at the 1-0 is just the athleticism and highlights that you see. I, I think it's the most exciting position in the infield. It might, it's probably the most scary as well. I mean, you have a good point. Well, You're playing middle infield, and I used to count the hops, right? Because sometimes you have a lot more time, and you can think about it. Definitely cannot at third base. Well, I've talked to a, a lot of SEC coaches it, just in, in our conference calls that we get, and, and all of them say that, that second base is actually the most difficult to play because of the amount of decisions that you have to make. But third base just in terms of, of sure reaction plays I would be scared to death <laughs> absolutely I mean you saw how hard again in the first inning leg hit that it, yeah. I mean coach Lindsay at that point was way behind third base and he didn't have time to react 2-2 Two -two to Wollers turns on it foul Wollers speaking of Players moving positions, catching today in game two. Played on the hot corner at third last night in game one. Two, two, caught looking inside corner, called strike three. Kind of hear the crowd reacting to that one, Brett, and I think it's more coming from not so much of that's a ball or a strike, because that's a great pitch. It's more the consistency. He hasn't called that, I mean, Maybe on a right-handed hitter he's letting yeah. to go, but he certainly has not called that up to this point. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I think that's a fair assessment, but Gottschall, nonetheless, 34 strikeout looking this season. And, and that says a lot right there, Amy, about her spin and her effectiveness is, you know, and, and, and taking nothing away from Pickens and, and Matty Pinta, the, the hard throwers, but Gottschall, she is a testament. If you have the spin, it's all about location and not so much about how hard you throw all the time. Again, taking nothing away from the hard throwers because they are they are just as talented as well. I mean, it just goes to show, Coach Dean talks a lot about matchups, matchups, and right now she's proving to be a tough matchup for Auburn. And she gets to nod today in game two. I don't know for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Carlin Pickens again tomorrow after 42 pitches, only 42 pitches last night in game one. 1-2, working on the outside corner and just missed to K.K. McCrary. McCrary, homer for Auburn back in the first inning. Tennessee native out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Her fourth homer of the year and seventh run batted in. 2-2, two -two, goes yard again with an O'Downer. Two home run day for K.K. McCreary and the Tennessee transfer. Holy cow, Brett, another home run, and here's the difference in the two that she's hit today. Off the bat, you knew those were out. And that gets Auburn a little life here in the bottom of the third. You take a look here again. She works herself back into the account and then is able to get under that and drive it out. <laughs> Two home runs on the day, almost the exact same. I think that one went a little further. There we go. Gotta love the reacts there. Now Tigers back into it. This game alone. Five home runs between the two teams. Three from Tennessee, two from Auburn slash KK McCrary with a two home run day. She's the second student athlete of the weekend to have a multi home run day. Last night for Tennessee, Sophia Nugent, who is the DP today for the Lady Balls, went yard twice. Now, Michaela Packer. 
trying to get something going for Auburn with two outs. She was hit by a pitch in the first inning. Takes it off speed for a strike outside corner. I'm going to leave that pitch alone for the rest of the game, Brett, I promise. But I, I just, it's a strike sometimes and it's a ball sometimes. One, two, high and away. Well, and, and to your point, it, if it is truly inconsistent, it, it, it has been in the top of the inning and the bottom of the inning. It hasn't been one or the other. No, no, you are exactly right there. But that is tough as a hitter if you're facing these really good pitchers and then you have that. And Coach Karen Weekly of the Tennessee Lady Vols. Coach Weekly, good start for your club today. And then let's start in the circle with Peyton. So far, so good. And aside from, from KK McCrary, she's been able to handle this Auburn lineup. How does she continue that today? Well, she's definitely not the person you want to miss to. You know, she's a good hitter, and there's a lot of good hitters over there. And I think we've just given her a couple pitches that were a little too sweet, and she's done her job with them. Talking about sweet pitches, Coach, four of your five runs coming from home runs. How about that attack mentality so far? Yeah, I'm liking that. And, you know, we just got to stay ahead of them, right? Um, I'd like to get see us get that spread a little bit more um, and just kind of see us stay locked in on, on hitting the pitches we want to hit. But as long as we do that, we'll be okay. Coach Weekly, thanks for the time. Best of luck. Thank you. Coach Karen Weekly of Tennessee. And, man, what a start. The Tennessee Lady Vols are on this year in SEC play. They're 7-0. They are four innings away from being 8-0. They lead Auburn 5-2. They have the longest active winning streak in the country right now at 19 games. A win today can make it 20. And the Lady Vols are back at the plate after scoring a run in each of the first three innings. Well, Brett, there's a lot of talk about, you know, teams kind of follow how their coach is. And you can just tell how relaxed Coach Weekly is. It's like, yeah, I love it. We're, we have a great mentality. We're going after it. it. It just kind of feels really relaxed in the dugout, and they're they're taking that to the plate. Sophia Nugent facing Milena Tambora for the first time this weekend. Nugent homered twice last night. She, she transferred in from Oklahoma after 18 starts in Norman. She was. Top five player in the country in the 2021 class. Highly talented player that Coach Weekly gets in, on Rocky Top. And that's the name of the game, Maybe That's something we haven't talked about today is and it, it, how if you, if you can find that gem in the transfer portal, it can really add to your team. And, well, Nugent, she, is, she has been evidence of that here this weekend in Auburn. Well, for sure. When that gem has already won two Women's College World Series, I mean, you got two <laughs> rings coming in. I mean, there's something to be said for that, right? Just again, can help with the mentality. And I mean, this this team, it really seems to have all the pieces. In Tennessee, they made it to OKC a season ago. Yeah. Tambora missing low. It's actually a really good pitch by Tambora and even better job by Nugent. Those are the pitches that Tennessee was not laying off in the first three innings. And Boyle with a payoff and is roped in the left by Nugent for her first hit of the afternoon. Take a look at it here, that 3-2 count. She knows she's going to get something good and sits on it, is able to drive it out into left. And I don't know about you, Brett, but I feel like there's been a double-digit hits, and I look up, and that's only the sixth hit of the day. Well, that's the thing. It feels like more because of the amount of runs scored. And you got to think, one's a two-run home run. The others were two solo home runs and then an error. So there hasn't been. You got to think half of Tennessee's hits have left the ballpark. It's Julia Katsoinopoulos at the plate, batting eighth, starting at catcher today. Arizona transfer, this is another kid that can play anywhere for Tennessee. She actually played a little outfield while she was in Tucson. Comes to Tennessee and, and she's back and forth between catcher and first. 
think Coach Weekly gave her the highest compliment you can of a new player. Of course, defense is where I, that's where my heart is. But when she called her a defensive savant, yeah. I was just like, oh, my goodness. I heard that, too. <laughs> The 1-1, one, one. opposite field, straight away center. And another blast for Tennessee. Julia Kutsoyanopoulos leaves the yard for the third time this year. Fourth homer of the day. Lady Vols pouring it on. It's 7-2, Lady Vols. Goodness, Britt, I'm used to tallying strikeouts, and right now I'm tallying home runs. You see this one again, just way too much of the plate, and the defensive savant hits it out of the park. Well, and it looked like it was going right to center, and then it kind of took a tail back to straightaway center. And Gonsoyanopoulos, she went down to get that ball, and that was the hardest hit home run of the day for Tennessee. Again, 10 of the 12 runs this weekend have been driven in by home runs. I mean, at some point, you got to give some credit to Coach Malvo, right? And again, on that interview I was listening to with Molloy talked about how they do technical stuff throughout the week and really kind of break down swings but when it comes to game day she's like it's simple attack it and yeah. that is what they're doing today well Amy you here's a chopper to short as Peralta records the first down for the Tigers you've, you've, you've played this game and been around this game for a long time and, and, and obviously with a, this day and age with, with technology and the information that's available to players this day and age to, you know, compared to years prior. How much of that are these coaches and these players having to balance using it versus also going with the simple approach that, that Tennessee's using and it's working so well? Another comebacker, Tambora, retires Riley West. Nice play by Tambora in the circle. Well, I think it's exactly what we we're talking about. You can take all of that information and you can kind of dig into it, but then you got to know your players, like which players can benefit from that? Which players do you just need to really, do? hey, swing it hard in case you hit it, right? But at the end of the day, if you're going up there thinking when it's game time, you can't do that. So you got to work on it during the week and then you have to fall back on all, everything you've worked on. Trust yourself and clearly Coach Malo is like, giving that message in a great way that these Tennessee hitters are accepting. Pitch inside to Zeta Pooney. Pooney has been the, the toughest out for Auburn today because she's one of two players that's two for two, a single and a home run. McKenna Gibson joins her, who's on deck. One oh pitch into the seats. I <laughs> am. My head shot up as like a little foul ball, and I was like, wait, where's that one going? <laughs> Tambora back with a 1-1. One -one. A strike despite getting away from Wallers behind the plate. Uh, for Tambora, man, T talk about experience and, and raw experience right now that you're getting as a freshman and, and the team she's had to pitch against so far in SEC play. Yeah, I was going to say it's not only today, right? Getting some time against A&M. Yeah, it's a, Missouri, Arkansas. It, and that also has to kind of speak to the confidence, right, that the coaching staff has in her now and going forward. It, it may not be getting the results that she wants, but this experience will help her going forward. It's low with a 2-2, two -two and that one. You know, we talked about Tennessee and, and the veterans that they have in this lineup, and, and, and Pooney's one of them. And again, she's one of the seniors, and there's just no break one through nine, because last night, Amy, it was 7-8-9 who did most of the damage for Tennessee. Payoff's on the way, and got her looking for strike three. Tennessee continues the trend with a whole. Mickey Dean, Coach Dean, is senior day for Michaela Packer, something new your program started this year in honoring seniors on individual days. What, what's Michaela mean to your team as you honor her here today against Tennessee? Well, she's just a great example of someone who shows up every day and works hard. And uh, that's why she's been in the lineup from day one. It's just, you know, she just simply outworks everyone else. 
Coach C Mac, KK McCrary, trying to put this offense on her back. Yeah, she's doing a really nice job. I wish we'd had some runners on uh, when she hits those balls, but uh, you know, she's she's having some really good at bats, and uh, you know, just continue that, and hopefully her teammates join her, and uh, we make this thing exciting. Coach Dean, thank you so much. Best of luck. War Eagle. Tigers head coach Mickey Dean, Auburn trying to fight back against Tennessee, and. So much easier said than done with, and it's not just today, Amy. I mean, they have the, the nation's active longest win streak for a reason. I mean, it, this isn't um, this isn't a, a, a downplay to Auburn by any means. It's just Tennessee's playing that well right now. They're doing it to everybody. It, they really are, and, and momentum is a funny thing. When you, when you start hitting, you start pitching it well, you start getting that confidence and just keep rolling on it, it's, it's something they build on, and, and then it's really hard to stop. Well, I was talking to Coach Dean this week, and, and obviously it's been a, a, a tough stretch for the Tigers in SEC play, and of course with the announcement this week. But even then with all that, that, that he told me, he said, look, he said this team is, despite the results, has been close, and it's just, just a couple things piecing it together in games. And when Auburn can figure that out, as Peralta sends one a ride foul, when Auburn, when this team figures it out, it, it, things are going to turn for this program. And right now, Auburn's just looking for that one game early in an SEC series to catch some of that momentum you're talking about. Yeah, and if you're an Auburn fan, it's got to come pretty soon, right? Because it's the SEC is tough, and if you can get a winning record and pick up some wins along the way, then you get to postseason. Then you see Peralta getting on one. Fair ball down the line, trying to leg it into a double, and she does. Now you have Peralta with a leadoff double here in the bottom of the four. You can take a look here again. That's just another pitch. It's the ones that are getting elevated, and this time Peralta's ready to swing at it. And when she does, she's a really good hitter. Drives it down the third baseline and lead off double. I think this is the inning, Brett. This is going to be the inning that Auburn has to put a couple runs on the board. Well, and, and they threatened around this part of the game last night in game one. And let's not forget, yeah, it was the third inning last night instead of the fourth where Auburn had the bases loaded. That was the only run they got across that game. And a stranded runner at third in the fifth and stranded one in the sixth. And then again, a runner at third in the seventh. So Auburn is has had runners on in this series, but last night, Amy, it was a struggle to get them in once they got on base. And it's no coincidence today, this is the second time through the lineup, right? And then the third time since last night, Gutshaw came in. O2's popped up. And Gibson has it for out number one. Thursday, it's in Walker to win that series and, and uh, talk about one of the most electric atmospheres, not only in the SEC, but in the country. Arkansas baseball's got it in Fayetteville. Well, they bring it in softball too, right? You go, they, they absolutely do. <laughs> I've been to Bogle Park. Yeah, you they turn on the TV do. and they are 10, 20 deep in the outfield. On Bogle Park, that was the host of the SEC tournament last year. You're looking at the host of the SEC tournament here in 2024, Amy, I don't know about you, but I had that, I've had that circled on my calendar for over a year. Well, for sure, and then you get a spot here of the Auburn crowd, not too shabby, and nice there goes traffic. Traffic. First time this year leaves the yard. She goes off the scoreboard to put the Tigers back in it. Tennessee's hit four home runs. Auburn says, hey, we can do that too. That's the Tigers' third home run of the afternoon. Isis Trastic with her first of the year. Puts Auburn back within three. Amy, we've got a ball game here. And just what Coach Dean said at the break, right? Like when. Mariah Pinta fouls off the first pitch of the AB. She's facing Charlie Orsini, who comes in with a 2.71 ERA. She's 1-0 on the year. She's a sophomore out of Australia, Amy. And the key stat here, this is the first appearance by a Tennessee pitcher that's not named Pickens or Gottschall. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. I mean, I, you never know what's going to happen, right, when you turn on the TV and you're watching SEC softball. And I am certain that the Auburn Tigers did not prepare for her. Well, I'm, I'm going to have to give my, my friend, voice of the Lady Vols, Brian Rice, a hard time for when talking about matchups and information that that's a – 
That's the name I did not hear. And I say that jokingly as again, Orsini, she has pitched this year for Tennessee with again, 10 appearances, five starts. Facing Riley McNemer here, actually, excuse me, the pinch hitter for Mariah Penta. McNemer pinch ran last night, junior out of Kansas. McNemer last year, Amy, if you remember, she missed most of last year due to an injury. So she's get, getting back into it, trying to find her way. And well, the biggest way to, to find your way back into the lineup is in pinch hit opportunities. And just sitting here watching these few, first few pitches, I mean, again, as a team, as you prepare over the week, you're preparing for 72, 73, and then you're preparing for Gutshaw. And so far I've seen 51, 53. I mean, this is an absolute different look. And that one hits 63, but that's, that's a mentality thing, right? You're gonna have to simplify the approach and make an adjustment. Well, the biggest thing for that home run Listen to this crowd right now. They are trying to get into it. Auburn's fighting back, four runs off four hits. Payoff pitch, hard hit ball is kicked up by Gibson, firing back and the throw's late. Good job by McNeever, just putting the ball in play and does it pretty hard. And it then is able to get down the line. And that's, again, that's what Auburn needs. They haven't had the response after scoring a run. So now they get the home run and then a runner on base and kind of pass the bat. I was looking too at Auburn. You know, their four hits today have all been extra base hits. Here's Annabelle Weidra. First error of the afternoon, by the way, for Tennessee. one zero -oh. in the left again. Riley West towards the line. Records the second out for Tennessee. That's tough to get a base runner on. Then Weidra comes on, gets a good swing at it, but right at West. Well, both of Weidra's in terms of starts and playing time this year, but he's trying to save those legs for, for postseason. Here's a pitch in the dirt, gets away from Katsuanopoulos. And that's a free base for McNeemer. You know, Lizenby is one of those, not only leading behind the plate, but you can vocal leader. She's all, her reacts are amazing. I yeah. love that. But now she's in a position that Auburn has talked ad nauseum about runners in scoring position and getting that big hit. Lizenby last night singled and she smoked one to left. That was a tough play for West, and it went off her glove for an error last night. And I mean, if that ball would have hit, been hit about. I don't know if it, if it had landed about a foot further, maybe a foot higher. It could have been a, a, an, an extra base hit for Lizenby last night instead of an error. Tigers have a runner in scoring position, down three with a tying run on deck. Auburn's had to do everything to stay in it, and they have. Tennessee, four home runs today. They've scored a run every inning, but Auburn has countered with three home runs of their own, two by McCrary. Good job by Lizenby to lay off of the changeup. Really good changeup there by Olsini. Now you can you can see that that's her game, changing speeds, keeping it down, and, and her ball has some natural drop to it. Chop to third, Gibson with another chance, steps and throws, is low, but Pooney cleans it up. And Auburn in the end, Lady Falls, they need that insurance now because Auburn's responded with three homers of their own. KK McCrary has hit two, and then Isis Trestic, she popped one off the scoreboard, top of the scoreboard, I might add, to put this game within three. But Tennessee last night, five runs off of three home runs today, seven runs off of four home runs. You know, you were talking about Trezvic answering there, and I was watching between innings, and it, it looks like Malloy that brought the entire Tennessee team together. No coaches were in there, and kind of getting after him. It's like, hey, this is this is not the standard. I think it was more the air after the home run, but, yeah, she was not happy. Well, Malloy is the 
emotional leader of this team. And, you know, as Coach Weekly, she talked to us this week about the different leadership styles on this team between Kiki Malloy, again, being the more vocal leader, and then, but you also have Riley West, who's more of a calmer, soft-spoken leader, who when she speaks, people listen. And she's talked about how Riley's inserted herself into that role. The deep fly ball left center. Michaela Packer takes care of it. And it's one away here in the top of the fifth. And But Amy, you, you've played it. This level, you, you've worked on college athletic, in, in college athletics for several years. You know leadership is key. You can have the talent, but if you don't have the leadership to go, go along with it, the talent does nothing for you. Well, exactly, especially at this level. I mean, the top teams are going to have the same amount of talent, and it's going to come out and who's producing that day. But also it's going to come down to holding your teammates accountable. Is this one going to stay in? Two, two of them. Two of them this time are, are able to stay in the park. Two fly balls out well, there to Michaela Packer. And in fairness to you, when Kiki Malloy hits one in the air, she led the country in home runs last year, and she and no one in Tennessee softball history has hit more home runs than Kiki. So you, you naturally have to look up and read the outfielders. Well, also today. <laughs> and also today. Also today for both teams. I mean, it combined seven home runs today between Auburn and Tennessee. I, that was not on my bingo card when I arrived today. It was absolutely not on mine. I'll blame that on Brandon, our, our producer. He's supposed to give us a heads up on those things, right? He, he gives, you know what? He's done some really, really <laughs> great graphics. So I'm waiting for the bingo card, hey, Brandon. Our crew, I have to take a moment to brag on them. And Amy, I was just thinking about before this game started today, and, and the work we get to do with, with this crew is incredible because... This crew here in Auburn, they, they do it as good as anybody in the country and ask ESPN and the SEC Network how often they use this very crew for linear broadcast, which they had last night. 100%. And they come up with some of these stats, and I'm like, no, no way. That cannot be right. And then inevitably they are, and they're just amazing. 2-0 count to Rodriguez under the glove of Tambor. Long throw wow. and in time. Wow. Streak, but Auburn, a piece runs together the last two innings to get back in this ball game. They've got one, two, and three due up here in the fifth. Well, not only that, it, a, a good defensive play can get you fired up, right? And that is one of the better ones I've seen in a while. Neymar's backhand, and hopefully the offense for the Auburn Tigers can follow suit. Well, and I think about what Auburn has been through this week. Coach Dean, he, he announced, he, he spoke with John Cohen, Auburn's athletic director, that he is stepping down at the end of this season. And, you know, Auburn... Our team, they, they, they have a choice to make to, you know, they, they got down big to a really good Tennessee team. They can they can ride that out in, in that way or they can rally. And, and these, these Tigers have chosen to rally, Amy, and that's not surprising when you look at what Auburn has done over the last seven years. I mean, they've, they've made the NCAA tournament every year except for the year that ended early due to COVID. And th this fight, again, not surprising one bit out of that first base Auburn dugout. Well, like you said, you know, giving up two runs in the first inning, it would have been easily kind of roll over, but there were a lot of tweets I saw this week from players that were just thanking Coach Dean and, and, and really supportive and nice. And, and so, yeah, you, you got, there's a lot of season left for everybody. And uh, I mean, case in point with LSU, yeah. right? They start out undefeated and then, then they've gone on, a, I mean, any team can go on a streak at any time. 2-2 two, two to Anna Wollers. Playing off the pitch outside. Wollers has had two tough ABs, but this is her first AB against Olsini, who has come in in relief, making her first SEC appearance of the season for Tennessee. Seventh pitch of the at-bat. Hard hit to second. Love by Rodriguez. And it's one down. Now you've got the... She's basically putting this offense on her back, and again, hits it hard this time to the right side, and is able to leg it out. How about a three for three day for KK McCrary? Again, who's from Murfreesboro and transferred to Auburn from Tennessee over two years ago. And that's just a good piece of hitting, right? When you've been turning on balls, driving them out to left field, and then you take another pitch outside and then drive it into right field. That is a really good piece of hitting. Corners in for center fielder Michaela Packer. Packer wanting to lay down a bunt. 
Catcher Katoyanopoulos dropped the ball and McCrary takes second. First, I was just making sure that Packer didn't get or didn't make contact with it. Well, that's huge, right? This changes the whole offensive complexion of this at bat for Packer. High chopper, Gibson climbs the ladder, steps and throws and gets Packer by a step. Not an easy play by McKenna Gibson. Not at all, and when you got Packer getting down the line with all that speed, that's a, <laughs> earlier she reached out and was able to grab one and that time she reaches up and then throws it across the diamond for a big, big out. Big back coming to the plate though, and Nelia Peralta doubled and scored a run in the fourth inning. That was Peralta, just her second double of the year. She's got four extra base hits. She's been a big home run threat for Auburn in her first two seasons on the Plains. Her freshman year, if I remember correctly, Amy, I, I think she hit around 10 home runs as a freshman. And you know, in the leadoff spot, that's also just a little bit different approach to a net bat, but big spot here. Yeah, she had 10 as a freshman, hit nine last year. It's one of those things when you get late into the inning, three runs is a lot, lot different than two. If Peralta can drive this run in. Two one, big swing, but an off speed by Olsini. Has her out in front for strike two. I'm gonna strike away. If you're Tennessee, and though this is crucial, the bottom of the fifth, runner at second, Auburn threatening, trying to chip away at this three-run lead. <laughs> Payoff, more spin. Peralta got just enough of it. Here's Peralta this year. Just a comparison from a freshman season. And I mean, it happens. We've seen this to an SEC hitter here or there. Arkansas had one, I think, a few weeks back. But it's just life in this league. Off the end of the bat, Gibson with a slow roller ends the inning for Tennessee. Auburn gets a runner on, but they strand her on second with through five. Love mic'd up Monday because you see all the great personalities from these awesome coaches in the Southeastern Conference, and not only that, you get an inside look at the talent in the SEC and, and Tennessee and Auburn, they have certainly made their runs, and, and I just think back to last decade of how good these programs have been, how good Tennessee is, is doing right now in the conference. Yeah, I mean, like you said, talking to these coaches, I don't, it's no mistake that uh, these coaches that come in and like really take the time, and you can tell genuine individuals, that bleeds over into their yeah. teams and also into their success. And Tony Baldwin is absolutely one of those. Well, Coach Weekly as well. Auburn's going to be, I think, on Mike Up Monday here in a couple weeks. I think Kentucky's coming to town. And if I remember correctly, that's a Saturday, Sunday, Monday series here at Jamie Moore Field. And they usually are, right? I mean, it gives me something to do on Monday nights. <laughs> I'll be looking for you. 2-1 to the panel. will stay in the infield, down the line. Tough play, leg tailing back, able to avoid the collision and hugs it out with her catcher, Anna Wollers. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen that before. I, <laughs> I was getting more nervous the higher it came, and then it just... I mean, it's her ball all the way, right? She should be calling it. There's no chance the catcher should catch that ball, but. <laughs> I think she's, thank, thank goodness I caught that. If Auburn comes back and gets the result they want today, that's got to be in the highlight reel. That's one for the season right there, I think. That, that, that ball was hit high. But and I'll say this though, and, and that's not an easy play to make for Leck, because at the time of day here in Auburn, the sun sets over the third base line and it hits the right side of the infield and right field extremely hard. So Amelia Leck, and you look at Tresvik out right, she's shielding her face right now despite sunglasses and a visor. 
with the glove when the, when the pitcher is ready to pitch. So I was honestly just about to say that I have a haunting memory of covering first on a bunt and a throw coming in that, and it just hit me. I lost it, and it just hit me. One one to Nugent, low and inside, and Auburn trying to be careful with Sophia Nugent because. She had two home runs last night. And already one for two today with a single and a run score. Brett, it's difficult to look up and down this lineup card and not find somebody who hasn't hit a home run today. Left center field, long run. Packer drops at the bottom of the wall. Just a long single for Nugent. So she'll trade two home runs from last night to two singles today. Amy, that's, she's got a four hit weekend hitting seventh in Tennessee's lineup. I mean, and not only a four hit weekend, hitting the ball hard. I yeah. mean, it, these are not bloopers that are dropping in. Well, what you're saying to about looking up and down the lineup for Tennessee who who doesn't have, because the lead kept breaking and it kept being frustrating. And also just don't make a mistake and you're fine. Okay, we'll use that pen to <laughs> write that pinch runner in at first base. I will gladly do that. As Katsoyanopoulos comes to the plate, Amy, remember what she did her last time up. Let me guess. Home run. Wild guess. Two run home run or third of the year. Bunted fair ball and no throw for Annabelle Weidra. Home plate umpire says it's fair. And a punt single. Man. That is, that is hard because your reaction is just to field the ball, but I feel like if she lets this one go, it's definitely going foul. Yeah, she picked it up on the line. So Katsoinopoulos after the two-run home run and the hardest hit home run of the day, by the way, for Tennessee, plays a short game with a bunt, and now it's runners at first and second for the Lady Vols. Nine-hole hitter Laura Miller comes to the play. And not that it gets any easier, but for sure Auburn is looking for an out here. You do not want to roll this lineup over with one out and bases loaded. We have West in the leadoff spot. She's had a tough day so far, but then you got Pooney Gibson and Kiki Malloy, who have all been a threat today for Tennessee. But Tennessee is, we're in the top of the six here. I didn't realize, Amy, last inning was the first inning that they have not scored a run today. Green light for Miller on the 2-0 is lifted foul. Yeah, and it was a good response by Auburn, right? Comes back and gets him 1-2-3 and then gets the first out of this inning and there's Nugent. But a ground ball for Auburn gets you out of it. 2-1. When I think about this offense today from both teams, Amy, already kind of thinking ahead to tomorrow if you get the rematch from Pickens and Penta and the velocity that both of those pitchers throw with. I mean, you're talking the SEC Pitcher of the Year from a year ago in Penta and Pickens, who has been stellar this year for Tennessee, they're both 1-2 in the SEC right now in strikeouts. Well, again, when you talk about the big picture with them able to put up seven runs, this is a closer game. Maybe Pickens is yeah. the one coming in to pitch. Yeah. And, you know, every pitch just tallies there. But now if she sits this whole day and then is able to come out tomorrow, a fresh Pickens is a scary thought. Two, two, good looking location. Miller able to take it outside. <laughs> crucial moment for Tennessee, crucial moment for Auburn. The payoff. Weekly hit to short. Peralta gets one at second with McNemer. 
stretching and keeping her foot on the bag to get the pinch runner. That is a really undervalued play, what McNeemer just did. I mean, off the bat, as an infielder, you want to think, oh, turn it, turn it, turn it, and then it was hit kind of slow. There was no chance they were turning it, and your job as a second baseman there is to make sure a one, and that's exactly what she did. Now it's runners at the corners, two outs in the top of the lineup. Coming back up for the fourth time today, it'll be the leadoff hitter, Riley West. I know there's two outs here, but with the way this Tennessee team plays, I, I, I would not be surprised if this runner uh, is put in motion. Bueller on first. She actually got thrown out last night trying to steal by Aubrey Lizenby. She's six for eight on the season. Chopped through the right side. A two out base hit RBI single for Riley West. And Tennessee gets a big insurance run here in the top half of the sixth. And as an offense, this is when you know things are going right. I'm just enough to drive it into the ground. It finds its way out into right field, and it just seems like every time that happens for Tennessee, a run is the result. Well, finding ways to manufacture runs, runners in scoring position, and doing it with two outs, by the way, Amy. That's the tenth hit of the afternoon for Tennessee. And Tennessee, and look at left on base today. Eight runs off 10 hits. They've had one runner left on base today. Yeah, I mean, this team can hit. They steal bases. Their staff ERA is unreal. I, it, there's just not many deficiencies. Well, Zeta Pooney's two for three. A single, a leadoff home run, and went down looking in the fourth. Chopped to third, glove side for Weidra. And that ends the threat here in the sixth inning. A two-out RBI single for Riley West gives Tennessee a four and three home runs here against Tennessee. And that's that's exactly what Coach Dean was talking about, right? Some production, getting the big hit, and unfortunately for Auburn, McCrary's big hits were so low. There was one on there for Isis, but those are the things Auburn's going to have to do, especially in these last two attempts that they have here in the sixth and seventh inning. Going to have to start, get some runners on, pass the bat, and then someone's going to have to come up with a big hit. You know, Lack today has been retired twice by McKinnon Gibson. All of a ground out and a pop out. Here is to the right side. Pony calling off her second baseman, Rodriguez, and Olsini gets the first Tiger hitter. Up to bat. Number three, Isis Kresvik coming back to the plate after that two-run home run in the fourth inning. And Amy, do you know that she hit a home run off Maddie Pinta? I have heard that story, actually. Yeah, she hit a home run off Maddie Pinta, and that's why she was recruited to Auburn, started her career at North Carolina A&T, and that's what caught the Tigers' attention, where she was a Big South All-Freshman team member. Well, that's obviously very difficult to do, but you can see you can see the power that she has. And even in this home run today, she did not get all of that one. I mean, she's just strong and stays within herself, trusts it. She had nine last year in her first year on the planes. And I feel like at this point, um, Auburn's offense has seen enough, has seen enough of Orsini. They can sit on that off speed. Everything is kind of low. Goes up to get that one, rolled over the top of it, and Gibson throws her out. We'll have the SEC Equestrian Tigers have won their sixth SEC championship. Here's another chopper. Gibson shuffles the feet, throws the first, and she ends a quick inning for the Tigers offensively. Tennessee, the top of the seventh. McKenna Gibson leads off the inning with a two for three day. Britt, it has been a smash fest, and I'm sitting here looking. Uh, see Pony two for three, solo home run. Gibson two for three, two run home run. But Tennessee came in with 53 home runs, sitting in third place in the SEC. And Middle infield, McNeemer beating Peralta there is one down. And I'm not sure what the two teams ahead of them, Georgia and Florida, have done, but 
I think Tennessee's pushing for that top spot. Yeah, Georgia, they lost a tough one today to Arkansas. Georgia's had a great start to the year, and I know Florida, they have two freshman arms that's really, you know, excited a lot of people down in Gainesville and, and Florida. They're going to be in contention this year and it's going to be a tough battle. Kiki Malloy pops it up to short to Nelia Peralta. But for Auburn, they're getting exactly what they need out of Melina Tambora. I mean, she's coming out of the bullpen today. Pitch four inning, giving up four hits. Yeah, she's given up a, a, a few runs. Three of those earned, four total runs given up. But this is quality experience for her, Amy, against, as we've been talking all day, a, a, a talented, talented Tennessee team. Well, yes, we talked a lot about experience, but I think it's one of those things that, you know, maybe you can get away with throwing that pitch, and now you're learning real fast that you put that one ball in, one ball up, you cannot get away with it at this level, and I think that's really what she's going to take away because when she keeps the ball down, uh, Tambor has been really, really good. Two outs is Destiny Rodriguez. Rodriguez, quiet today, reached on an error. Had one hit last night in game one, but again, she exploded in that South Carolina series with seven hits. And, and that's the thing for Karen Weekly that, I, like for Tennessee fans, you just cannot take for granted because when one player's having a, 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 an off day, hey, there's another or two or three players that's going to pick you right up. And, and, and how about this? And this is credit to our producer, Kiki Malloy, Amy 0 for 7 in this series. And, and that's, again, I, I'm not, not talking bad about Kiki. She's an incredible player, but it just goes to show your best player doesn't always have to be putting up the crooked numbers for you. Right, and if you would have told me that Tennessee has eight runs on 10 hits today and, and Kiki Malloy is not a part of that, yeah. that's exactly well, to your point. And think about the home runs in both games that Tennessee has hit in, in Kiki's not in that conversation. Again, I, I, I certainly wouldn't have, have guessed that at the start of this series. Absolutely not. And Well, but as the 3-1 comes in for ball four and a two-out walk, Tennessee can extend the inning, but, you know, that's the conversation Coach Weekly's actually had with Kiki is that you know, she said when she struggled, hey, she still feel like, feels like she's having quality at bats. And that's exactly what Coach Weekly told her is, hey, keep having the quality at bats. You've got to let the results go. You've got to give that up because, you know, in, in this league, quality at bats, that's all you can ask for in the quality of pitching that you're facing. And and I, I've been thinking about that advice ever since I heard it from, from Coach Weekly. And <laughs> you can tell why she's been so successful at doing her job for the last 20 plus years. Well, absolutely, in a sport where failing seven out of ten times is success, yeah. I mean, that, get, that can be a mental struggle, and it's just something that you kind of got to ride out, and it's, it's obviously super helpful if you have teammates around you picking it up, when, and so not all of that pressure is on you. I, I have a strong, I was just going to say, like I think early in non-con, she pitched a few innings all together, but this definitely is the longest outing, and it's going to be one of those one of those times where she needs to shut the door. Two outs, seventh inning, find the pitch, dig deep, get out of this inning. Facing Taylor Panel, who went yard in the second inning. 1-1, one, one, laces one through the left side for a two out base hit. That's hit number 11 of the day for Tennessee. Take another look here again. That's when she's getting into trouble, just leaving that ball elevated. And just like these Tennessee hitters have done all day, jump on it. Well, and we mentioned Tambora, Amy, and the day she's had for Auburn. The same can be said for Tennessee's relief pitcher, Orsini. She's gone two and two thirds. Her first SEC outing has only given up a hit. She's had one wild pitch. 40 pitches, 25 of those have been strikes. And in a season that's as long as this one is, you're, you're going to have to find it, it. When you have the best one-two punch in the country, not a ton of times, but if you can find a third person to come in and get a few innings, 
I mean, that just helps you in a long one. When you get into a regional, a super regional, and saving the arms. And Anna Wollers is going to move to third. She's got a face now. And she, meaning Annabelle Weidra, has got to face Sophia Nugent, who has had a stellar series for Tennessee. Two for three today, two singles, two runs scored. Last night, two for three night with two home runs. Weidra missing high, makes it 3-0, and oh, and one base is open. And then you take a look at it there. The first Man. six games, only four for 16 with no homers. And then the last six at-bats, four for six with two home runs. 3-0, thought it was ball four. Instead called back for strike one. Time called is... Spinner. Spinner got loose. Remind everybody what the spinner is. It's, just, it's a pitching tool to help perfect your pitches. Well, because, you know, when you say spinner got loose, <laughs> you could think of the fidget spinner. I'm just saying. Here's the 3-1. Low it outside for ball four. That'll load them up for Tennessee. And Julia Katsoyanopoulos, who... Went yard in the fourth inning and then had a bunt single in the sixth. This is one of those times here that Auburn just needs to have a really big infield, knock it down. You can get an out at any base. I mean, four runs, you're still within a swing of the bat if you can load the bases. Much more than that, it becomes very, very difficult. I mean, four is already, but you definitely want to keep it here. That's Winopolis, another Tennessee player that has stepped up when her name has been called here this weekend in Auburn. Had the grand slam against Mizzou, played for the Italian national team back in 2021. And, and actually, she competed and recorded a hit in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. How cool is that? She is one of two players in this ballpark today who have done that. Auburn associate head coach, Emily Carasoni, did the same. And some uh, of these swings today have just been beautiful. By the way, she's teammates with Emily Carasoni on that Italian national team. One, two, goes down looking. Annabelle Weidra. Actually, it'll be Lizenby as the DP. That one first pitch off the end of the bat. Scooped up by Miller and got it to first in time, Tennessee. Needs just two more. And if you're Tennessee, that's exactly what you want, right? You're counting outs at this point. Getting the first one is big. I'll bring up Aubrey Lizenby. Lizenby actually had the 1AB in the fourth. Got retired by McKenna Gibson. Gibson's made some nice plays on that hot corner today. She's had a lot of chances. I mean, super athletic, tall, strong, and anything over there is... Well, and she's got range. Yeah. She's got so much range. We've seen that last night, and we've seen it today in game two. And if you're a coach, that's what you want, right? You have such good pitchers in the circle, and then just make the routine plays. Throw a couple runs up on the board, and then all of a sudden you got a 19-game win streak on the line. Again, touching on what we did last half inning with Orsini and the, the job she's done today of taking some pressure off, working with a four-run lead here and taking some pressure off, allowing Tennessee to give Carlin Pickens a day of rest. Peyton Gottschall went three and a third today. But Orsini coming in, not having pitched in an SEC game, Amy, has come in and give Tennessee some, some crucial innings here in game two. Yeah, we talked a lot about the experience for Tambora, but... On the flip side, absolutely. 3-1, Lizenby got a hold of it. Line drive off the top of the wall. Lizenby on her horse has to turn back to first. A long single 
that nearly missed. I'm talking what, maybe a foot? This being a solo home run. You take a look at it here. I mean, a day like today, you think for sure that one's out, right? But credit to Lizenby. This is why I love watching her play. I, yeah. She didn't, if it was out or not, she was running as hard as she could out of the box. And sometimes this is what it takes, right? Just one chip away. Got to get the runners on. Peaking the Pac-Man shirt. Uh, but when you have someone like Pickens in your dugout and you need two outs. Also, when she's... I mean, you're looking here, 4 and 0, 0.47 ERA, 37 strikeouts to just six walks. But I think the biggest thing right here is she's going to touch 72, 73 on a yeah. radar gun. But after you've faced 53, 54, topping out at 60, that 73 is going to look a lot harder. Um, Auburn and Tennessee fans get used to pickings in the circle. In all likelihood, this. We'll expect to see tomorrow in game three of this series. Tennessee two outs away from winning this series today and extending that nation's longest winning streak. I mean, she's had just two earned runs allowed in the last 64 innings pitched. Two one pitch is high to Anna Wohlers. Well, and like you said, Pickens is most likely to be in the circle tomorrow, and it would go a long way for Auburn if they could put together some good at-bats, even if they don't end up getting the win here, just to take some of that confidence into tomorrow. Three-one, little uh, defensive swing, long throw for Gibson, head first slide, not in time, and Gibson makes the play. We've seen McKenna Gibson do just about everything at third base this weekend for the Lady Vols. I'm kind of surprised just with where you're at in the game that you don't know, take a look at this, but yeah, I definitely got her. I, sliding into first base sometimes, I don't understand it, but I, I appreciate the effort. Auburn's down to their final out, and they've got their best bat at the plate. K.K. McCreary, three for three, two home runs and a single. Five homers, eight runs batted in this year. It's another great play by Gibson over there. Yep. And again, that pinch came high and inside for Wollers. It, it, to me, it, Amy, it was more of a defensive swing that unfortunately rolled fair. Gibson can end it. Glove, steps, throws, and Tennessee wins the series over the Auburn Tigers. Eight to four, and they continue the nation's longest winning streak with their 20th straight. From the blueprint to the machine, they're the architects of every scene. Building bridges, reaching high. With every design, they touch the sky. They calculate, they innovate. With precision, they navigate. Through circuits and codes, they pave the way for a future brighter every day. Engineers, they're the masters of creation. Turning visions into foundation. With expertise and dedication, they shape the world. Engineers, they're the masters of creation Turning visions into foundation With expertise and dedication They shape the world as their vocation From mechanical to electrical Their knowledge is formidable They engineer solutions, they never tire Turning challenges into empire From skyscrapers to satellites Their impact reaches dizzying heights they solve problems, they innovate In the world they help facilitate Engineers, they're the masters of creation Turning visions into foundation With expertise and dedication They shape the world as their vocation It's not just about the calculations But the passion that drives their creations With perseverance they break through Barriers making dreams come true So here
Here's to the engineers, the minds of play Shaping tomorrow in every way Innovation is their currency They're the architects of our custody